It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. And welcome to the Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina, an enormous sports weekend on tap and the appetizer tonight. Defending national champion North Carolina getting set to tangle with the Davidson Wildcats. Great to have you with us here inside the Spectrum Center alongside of Jason Capel. I am Roy Philpott. And Jason, we know about the defending national champions. Meanwhile, Davidson leads the country in three-point makes per game at nearly 14 per contest. Very efficient offensive team. Davidson Wildcats loves to spread you out, run that motion offense, and get guys involved beyond the three-point line. Well, we take a look at Jason Capel's checklist for tonight. It starts with three-point shooting and goes to the bigs for UNC. Well, when you look at Davidson, you talked about it, Roy. A team that leads the nation in attempts as well as makes but Tar Heels they were dominated by Michigan on the boards bounced back against the Wolverines the Spartans really put it to them in that contest they must rebound the basketball to high clip and one of the best front court matchups we're going to see Luke May against Peyton Aldridge one of the top players in all the Atlantic 10 very similar in styles can stretch you out this is going to be a hotly contested game here in Charlotte and what an atmosphere in the home arena of the Charlotte Hornets out of the NBA. Two old rivals getting set to do battle. Wildcats coming in at 3-2. and two. UNC at 6-1. and one. Tar Heels picked second in the ACC this year. Davidson picked sixth in the 14-team Atlantic 10. Veteran officiating crew led by Ron Gruber, Ted Valentine, Lee Cassell. Peyton Aldridge versus Garrison Brooks. The opening tap controlled by the Wildcats. Tar Heels starting out man to man. Everyone must be connected. All five guys understanding it's going to be a lot of cutting screens. And a very well connected offensive Davidson ball club. And Jason, the Wildcats also first in the country in assists per game. They share the basketball well. They got to make some threes tonight and a great start. Kellen Grady, the freshman, connects. Kellen Grady off to an excellent start this early season. A freshman that understands how to play and has fit in seamlessly with this Davidson ball club. They'll work it inside. Brooks too strong. Rebound. Pops out to the Wildcats. And here comes Grady. Signed with Davidson because he was a big Steph Curry fan. And tell you what, his game kind of reminds you of the great one. Still a long ways to go, of course, but loves to shoot the triple. And in the paint. Too strong, offensive glass, Aldridge, and a 5-0 start for Davidson. And there's the rebounding again. This isn't your typical Tar Heel team with two bigs up front that can simply dominate. As a committee, they have to get the job done. And Roy, one guy that's gotten the job done in this early season up front, Luke May, in my opinion, the most improved player in college basketball. Second in the ACC in scoring his first basket tonight. And he's from just up the street in Huntersville, North Carolina. Luke May, the hero last year for the Tar Heels in their magical run. Deep triple, Aldridge off the mark. And Joel Berry attacking, blocking foul called. John Axel Goodmanson picks up his first. A great crowd, great energy in this building and in this city this weekend. Jason, the ACC championship game tomorrow between Clemson and Miami over on ABC. And tonight, a wonderful matchup between two in-state rivals. I've seen a lot of mock turnover chains in, <laughs> in uptown Charlotte the last couple days. Joe Perry. Aldridge controls. Talking to Coach McKillop before this game, he said his team wants to play fast. But to keep North Carolina out of transition, they have to take care of the basketball, and they must do a good job taking good shots. 29th season in Davidson, about a 25-minute drive here from Uptown Charlotte, pending traffic. And what a job he has done, of course, brought in Steph Curry. Made that uh, incredible run almost 10 years ago. That's hard to believe in the NCAA tournament. Deep three, Aldridge short. Battle for the loose basketball. Carolina's got it. And Pinson sails that one out of bounds. Now Roy Williams, year number 15 in Chapel Hill. You see the career victories. One of the best in the business. 
and Jason three national championships in the last 13 years. Done an excellent job with this program. And this season, having to coach a bit different, a very youthful front line, three freshmen that are going to have to step up and man that center position. Aldridge, May controls. And the high-low action, a foul inside. Mickelson picks up his first. Second team foul. Up and down season so far for Davidson. Three and two coming in. Mentioned the three-point shooting, Jason. They nailed 26 triples in their season opening win against Charleston. So this is a team that can light it up. Penson. Couple of losses. Appalachian State probably opened a lot of eyes. Got off to a slow start offensively. See the numbers for Aldridge. First team preseason All-Atlantic 10. Mickelson comes up short. Pence in the rebound. Inside and tapped away. The Tar Heels making an effort to get the ball inside, but you can't stare it down. The Wildcats doing a nice job rotating, getting deflections which lead to another offensive possession. Two teams played last year. It was a three-point game, less than two to play. Before North Carolina sees control late. New shot clock. Aldridge, corner three. Second chance opportunities. The Wildcats have lightly or bodies get into the boards. May answers. And Roy, I talked about these guys have similar skill sets. These are your power forwards on both ball clubs stepping out, already knocking down consecutive three-point shots. Going to be an excellent matchup to watch throughout this contest. And it could be one of the best of the weekend. Pritchett, a sophomore from Mooresville, another three. And this is the exact recipe Davidson needs to have a chance tonight. Three-point shooting's got to be rock solid. Barry and air ball. May on the offensive glass. Can't connect. May working hard on the boards. And May off the bounce is hammered. The Davidson Wildcats off to a hot start. Moving the basketball. Peyton Aldridge. Three ball corner pocket. Deshaun Pritchett, too much space. Wildcats ahead. Back in Charlotte, a look at the defending national champions. Just one setback. It was a crushing loss against Michigan State up in Portland. PK 80, what a tournament that was. But Luke May, one of the big stories, Jason. Top five in the ACC scoring and rebounding so far. And when you talk to both coaches, Luke May hotly recruited by Coach McKillop and Davidson. When we asked both coaches, are you surprised at his progression this season? And both guys very adamantly said no. It's a kid that has a skill set, but more importantly, he's a hard worker who's put in the time, the effort to improve individually. And you love to see kids like that rewarded with playing well. It's an interesting story because he was recruited in North Carolina as a walk-on as Kenny Williams on the offensive glass and what a season he's having he was recruited as a walk-on and then given a scholarship in his first year and a lot of people believe that well you know he was kind of an afterthought but in reality he was an espn top 100 player goodmanson off the mark pence in skies and he's gotten better each and every year as one of the hardest workers on this team classic example and a staple of carolina basketball if you're the first big down the floor you put your head down you rim run the guards pitch it up the sideline and look to get the ball inside. Luke May, the recipient there. Rusty Regal checking in for the first time. That's 32 and wide for Davidson. And he'll get the call here. Deep triple all net. The captain, the senior from right here in Charlotte. And the Wildcats already with four three-pointers. Inside, down low, too strong, and a late whistle. We'll send Sterling Manning to the strike. A 
staple of Carolina basketball. The first big down the floor usually eats the nice rim run, and the Tar Heels pitch it up the sideline. The guards have their heads up. You share that basketball, and you hustle down the floor. You could possibly beat the defense and get a layup. That's secondary break one-on-one -on -one right there for the Heels. Get the ball down the floor. The bigs run hard. Look to pitch it ahead before the defense is set. Manling, talented freshman out of Greensboro, broke both of his legs in high school. One his sophomore season, the other his junior campaign. Spent his senior year trying to figure out how to run again. And he's really kind of just getting back into basketball shape. Connects one of two at the line there. Foul went against McGarry. That's his first, a transfer from Boston College. In their motion offense, Goodmanson, another three. The surgical precision. All five guys in white jerseys understand their cuts. The big set legal screens with a lot of physicality. Shooters ready to catch and knock it down on the catch. Luke May with seven, make it nine. Well, this guy just scoring at will so far in the first eight games this year. Well, you do your work early if you're Luke May. He gets inside, carves out position, and they're looking for him now. They're looking to get him the basketball. Very efficient player this early season. Runner short, May the rebound. Jason, I asked Luke today, how has your life changed since the NCAA tournament last year? Another basket, this one off the glass. Said really hasn't changed very much. I did get a standing ovation when I returned to campus after we won the title in <laughs> well, my business class, and so he felt good about that. But otherwise, he keeps his head down, and he's working hard on his game. Well, what has changed is his skill set. What you saw there was Luke May get a rebound, bring it up himself. Post to post for a nice little finish. Oh, don't forget Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, number seven, Kentucky, hosting Harvard inside Rupp Arena. After that, it's second-ranked Kansas and Syracuse. The third annual Hoop Hall Miami Invitational inside American Airlines Arena. Both games on ESPN, streaming live on the ESPN app. Brandon Robinson picks up his first personal. If you haven't downloaded the app yet, I don't know what you're waiting for, especially for all you basketball junkies. A great time of year. We've got bowl games coming up in football. Goodmanson thought about it, attacking. Turns it over. May an open look. And a rare miss. Manley the rebound off the Goodmanson miss. Coach Roy Williams stomping his foot on that sideline. In this ball game, no excuses. You must fight over screens. You can't give shooters open looks. And Kenny Williams, we talked a lot about Luke May and the job he's done in this early season. But Kenny Williams, he's healthy, he's confident, playing great basketball. Kovacevic, a pretty spin move. Little old school big man. Great footwork inside, held his position. This is a young man that's going against a freshman front line, getting the job done. Deep three for Jalik Felton. Seven Woods not available tonight. Has a foot injury. He participated in the shoot around with a boot earlier today. And the step back by Robinson is good. You know, both teams trading offensive punches here in the early going. Wildcats lead it by one. And how about the rise of Luke May? What a performance so far. 11 points in the early going. How has he done it? We'll explain that and more coming up. Nineteen, eighteen, our score under 12 to play in a fast-moving first half. Jason Capel, Roy Philpott. One of the biggest stories in college basketball this year, the development of Luke May. 20 points per game, Jason, nearly 10 boards per contest. Those numbers speak volumes. Already scored more points this year than he did all of last season. And he's become a go-to guy for the Tar Heels, a guy that does it inside with angles and great footwork, but he can also stretch the defense and pull you out beyond the three-point line. And 
showing us something we haven't seen. The rebound, taking it on the floor coast to coast. First two seasons you see a guy that played a complimentary role, Kennedy Meeks, Isaiah Hicks up front. But now he's the leader of this front line and becoming one of the leaders along with Joel Berry of this very talented Tar Heel basketball team. Recruited to Davidson by Bob McKillop. Wanted to sign with Carolina, he did. And has developed better than just about any other player in the country this season. Foul inside. You know, I talked to a couple of the beat writers that cover Carolina on a daily basis. I asked them to a man, Ben Sherman at InsideCarolina.com, some of the other guys. Are you surprised by this? They all said yes. We talked to Roy Williams, Bob McKillop. They said no. I think you and I are with the majority. Everyone else that is really impressed and not necessarily shocked but amazed by what's happened with him. What well, Coach Roy Williams told us, you can't measure what was in his heart. Guys try yeah. to pin you down in high school with rankings and lack of size, maybe athleticism. But this young man has simply told Coach Williams after each season, I'm going to be the hardest worker you've seen. And with that, he's gotten better. With opportunity, he's been ready. And this season, make no mistake, the Tar Heels have needed him to man that front line. He's taken that role and having an excellent early season. Davidson back to work. Tend to shoot plenty of time. Regal nearly turned it over, and Davidson will. Traveling violation. Second turnover for the Wildcats. Andrew Playtech checking in for the first time for Carolina. Three in blue. Three-pointer off the mark. Playtech on the offensive glass. And it'll bounce out of bounds. And a jump ball. There was some hard contact inside. A lot of contact. That looks like something we're going to see tomorrow. <laughs> Defensively on the football field, but Tar Heels regained possession. The officials could not make a call to determine who the ball was off of. So, as the great Rashid Wallace would say, ball don't lie. It comes back to the Tar Heels for another possession. Tar Heels get it back. Back to work. Brandon Robinson in traffic. Count it. A 10-2 run for North Carolina. The Tar Heels out in front. And you can feel the defensive tenacity pick up a couple of notches on the North Carolina side. Approaching the halfway point of the first half. Inside, Kovacevic comes up short. Nice defense. Great defense by Manley. Moved his feet, built his wall. You must make the bigs of Davidson score over you. Don't bail them out with silly fouls. Jalik Felton. Back iron. And Playtech battling. Pops out to Grady. Three on three. Grady. 15 a game, and that's one of the reasons why. Robinson again off the glass smooth operator nice job turning down that three-point shot Robinson has let a few go from the three-point line He's a slasher put him on the floor able to get all the way to the rim. He's got six as Davidson nearly turns it over Kellen Brady comes up with that loose ball pushes it up Every guard needs to be able to get to the nail in transition and knock down a pull-up jump shot and then Robinson for the Tar Heels, turning the corner, dropping that inside shoulder. Getting all the way to the rim for an easy two. Robinson scored the last six points for Carolina. Entertaining start to this win here in the Queen City. Very big sports weekend. And Grady, out of control, comes up short. Regal gets it back and a fresh 30 seconds. Well, Regal thought about it. Scrappy player rejected inside. Pinson comes out of there. Robinson attacking off the glass. Brandon Robinson with eight. Brandon Robinson missed two games with a shoulder injury. He's making his presence felt in this contest, showing his athleticism, getting to the rim. 
putting a lot of pressure on this Davidson defense. Nice job defensively by the Tar Heels. You have your two wings helping one another, and Robinson down the floor uses his body to shield the basketball and the nice jelly roll finish inside. Valentine went against Penson. Robinson to the bench. Different team for North Carolina this year. Won the national championship last year, but of course lost Justin Jackson, Kennedy Meeks. Tony Bradley left early, surprised a lot of folks in Chapel Hill. One of the keys this year for Carolina, the development of their freshman bigs, and there's three that have a chance. Another open three for Davidson, Will McGarity, the BC transfer. And that's number six for the Wildcats. You must contain penetration if you're the Tar Heels. If you're going to help, there are five guys on the floor in white jersey that can knock it down from distance. Joel Berry checks back in. We're tied at 24. And he'll feed Kenny Williams inside, no whistle. 11 left on the shot clock. Davidson basketball, penetrate pitch. If you're late, five guys can stretch you out. McGarity there, hands ready, feet set. He's a big guy, but he shoots with supreme confidence from the three-point line. Wildcats connect. 14 threes per game. Number one in the country. That's what they do. And a screen top of the key. Offensive foul. Brooks, the guilty party. And that'll be his first. So Brooks shuffling his feet on the screen attempt. Well, you must come to a standstill when you're setting these screens. The Tar Heels run very intricate, out-of-bounds plays. And you can see the freshman simply moving to his left, trying to ensure he makes contact. The official saw it in his Davidson basketball. Nice pump bank by Aldridge. And the rebound by Brooks. Quickly ahead to Luke May. That would have been a sports center top 10 for sure out of bounds. Back to the men in blue. Under eight media timeout. We are tied at 24 here in Charlotte. Interesting, Matt, as we take a look at our NCAA storylines. Fast start for Billy Kennedy, Texas A&M. Big win against West Virginia overseas. ACC and SEC, Jason, so far been dominant. And, of course, Marvin Bagley the third at Duke. What a start for his freshman campaign. Marvin Bagley simply, in my opinion, the best player in college basketball. Does everything really well. He's that new hybrid forward that can do so many different things. Having a great start to his freshman campaign. Kenny Williams, elbow jumper, short. May was pushed from behind. And don't forget Sunday at 4 o'clock Eastern on ESPN, the 16th annual Jimmy V Women's Classic presented by Corona. It's number one UConn and number three Notre Dame at the XL Center in Hartford, Connecticut. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. Huskies have played in and won the Jimmy V Women's Classic the last six years as May now has 12. And UConn, no surprise, dominant. Notre Dame beats everybody but UConn. But UConn. We'll see if that'll change this year. Of course, the big upset, the final four a season ago, as UConn fell to Mississippi State. One of just two losses in nearly 170 games. And that pass sails out of bounds. Aldridge got ahead of himself. Well, a great job there defensively by the Tar Heels. And talking to Coach Williams before the game, he wanted this ball club to push Davidson out of their scoring areas, not allow them to get set up in their offense and comfortable. There, the freshman did a nice job. Brooks forced the turnover. Williams thought about the triple and set attacks. Rejected at the rim and tapped out of bounds. Back to UNC. Kenny Williams to show and go. But defensively, McGarity there. Hands extended, kept the ball in play. Nice job defensively by the big man from Davidson. Had 40 blocks last year to lead the Wildcats. Two-point lead for Carolina. Ranked 13th in the country after the loss to Michigan State at PK-80 last week. Two to shoot. Barry thinks about it. And well short on the three. 
And a scrum as both players hit the deck. Davidson will take over on the held possession. As Brooks came up a little late that time. And Joe Barry has to do a better job as the point guard, recognizing where the shot clock is. I think he happened to look up and notice there was that one he had to take that shot. Davidson Wildcats do a nice job there defensively and once again in a hotly contested game have a chance to tie this ball game up with seven to go. A fun start for two offensive minded teams. By the way, Brandon Ram Robinson with those eight points all scored consecutively. That's a new career high for him. Currently sitting on the Carolina bench and there's another three for Peyton Aldridge. The scouting report on Peyton Aldridge, you must guard him beyond the three-point line. Brooks, a freshman, Roy probably isn't accustomed to guarding and chasing the guy out that far on the floor. Must do a better job. Matchup zone is Barry, the floater. And Jason, he was in this Coliseum working out about an hour before the shoot-around started today, working on that exact shot from all angles of the rim. Joe Barry is well-documented, broke his hand. He is... Just now getting himself back into form. Had a great game against Stanford. 29 points, 5 for 11 from 3. But it's about getting reps. He wasn't able to be on the floor and practice with the team at full strength. But make no mistake, one of the best point guards and best leaders in college basketball. They're the show and go. And every guard needs to have that shot in his repertoire. Get inside a nice floater over the big. Broke his hand back on October 22nd. And is already back in action over the rim as Davidson turns it over. Well, the Wildcats doing exactly what they wanted to. Seven made three-pointers already. Coach McKillop yelling out to his freshman Carter Collins too early. In order to keep Carolina out of transition, you must take good shots. You take bad shots, it leads to the Tar Heels getting opportunities just like that offensively. They're not going to take the air out of the basketball, the Davidson Wildcats, but they must ensure they get a good look each time down the floor. Williams now with six after that last make. Leads the ACC in three-point shooting. Tar Heels in transition. Barry throws it up and in. And a chance for three the hard way. Well, great defense leads to excellent offense. Once again, Theo Pinson coming from the help side with the block. And power guard Joel Berry puts his head down, attacks the basket, gets his footprints in the paint once again. Able to take the contact, finish the three-point play. Most outstanding player the Final Four in that national championship run last season. Boy, it seems like he's been in baby blue forever. And his game continues to improve year by year. He's one of the most competitive guys you're going to see in college basketball. That's why he's become the leader of this team for multiple seasons. A great competitor and an excellent leader for this Tar Heel ball club. Tar Heels with their largest lead. Kovacevic back to the basket. A little drop step and pivot. And nicely done for the big man. Don't show it all to him, big fella. The fancy footwork inside. And once again, he's going against a freshman. Doing a nice job showing that basketball creating angles when you're not as athletic as some you must use your strength to your advantage the nice footwork keeps the dribble alive recognizes the double team goes away and a little kiss off the glass that's the second time he's been patient taking his time use angles in order to carve out that space for an easy two in the paint both teams now in the bonus Aldridge picked up his first and that'll put Barry at the stripe. Well, you wonder, too, how long does it take to come back truly from a broken hand? It was on his right hand. you got to think he's probably not at 100% just yet, but it's only a matter of time. But it's been really impressive just over a month ago where that injury occurred. He's getting back into a rhythm. rhythm. He's knocking down shots. And for a guy who hasn't used that hand in some time, just now getting back to it, coming into this contest, 22 assists to only seven turnovers. That speaks to his ability to lead this ball club. And he can score. He's got the last seven for Carolina. Goodmanson. Tar Heels tightening down their defensive clamps. 
And the big man throws up a brick. Probably a little out of his range there for Kovacevic. Well, he's done the job inside with great footwork. Yeah. For a couple, your confidence seems to soar. Theo Pinson called for an over-the-back call. Maybe a quick shot there from Kenny Williams. And that's the third personal on Theo Penson. And so he sits down on the Carolina bench, frustrated. Both teams in the bonus. Goodmanson at the stripe, where he's 83% this season. That's a big third foul there. Theo Pinson is that Swiss Army knife for the Tar Heels, a guy that does a bit of everything, has flirted with triple doubles throughout this season. He's a guy that's not a great shooter. He's a slasher, maybe the best passer on this basketball team, and a lockdown defender. We've seen multiple blocks, and he brings that stability as well on the wing when the Tar Heels need a guy that can do a little bit of everything to get him to the winner's circle. 35-31, Wildcats back within four. This has been one of the strangest weeks I can remember in sports history. There are all kinds of breaking stories. Mentioned the ACC championship game here in Charlotte tomorrow. On the college football side, you had Jimbo Fisher leaving Florida State today to take over at Texas A&M. You got Tiger Woods now back and doing an incredible job down in the Bahamas. Just told Aaron Boone was signed on as the New York Yankees' oh, new manager. He got the manager. I mean, that's job. unbelievable. All right. Got some Clemson fans in attendance tonight watching their ACC rivals. And never mind what's going on at Tennessee. And their search for a new football coach. Here's a Tar Heel turnover. And this week's got to go down as one of the wackiest weeks in sports history. It really does. Under four to play in the first half. Sweet pump fake. And the two. A long two at that for Kellen Grady. And a little personal matchup here with Grady and Playtick. These guys were roommates in high school. And after that made three-point shot, Grady gives a look and a little smile at his old roommate. The, the freshman doing an excellent job to show the goal. Beat set, eyes locked, splash from three. Well, Tom and Matt, well said. We talked with Roy Williams about defending the three earlier today, and that was his big concern. You see the numbers. Davidson scorching hot from distance. Well, shooting over 50%, and that's their style of play. Must continue to take good shots. And conversely, on the other side, the Tar Heels dominating the paint 22-4. to four. Contrasting styles in both ball clubs are doing a nice job. And McKillop... Is always excellent out of timeouts. The Wildcats execute the backdoor cut in Grady. But Joel Berry, a one-man fast break. If you're Coach McKillop, you can't be happy out of a nice execution, a finish at the rim to allow the point guard to go coast to coast through traffic for an uncontested finish. Baskets coming from all over the court. Berry with nine. Grady has nine to match him. Ten to shoot. And a traveling violation. Out of the timeout, the Davidson Wildcats run a nice little backdoor cut. Aldridge dribbles at him. Grady sets him up. He's knocked down some shots, so you must respect his ability to shoot. Nice cut back door for an easy finish. Inside out, Barry for three. In and out. I mean, that's Davidson basketball, the backdoor screen action and the backdoor cuts, rather, not to mention the three-pointers going in. That's what they do. Coach McKillop, one of the best strategic coaches in all of college basketball, always has something up his sleeve out of a timeout, and you love it as a coach when your squad comes out and executes out of timeouts. Regal sizing up Williams, nothing doing. Five to shoot. Goodmanson, May controls. And the Tar Heels trying to extend their two-point advantage. Barry scored the last nine. May battling. Aldridge the rebound. Aldridge, an open look, top of the key.
Joel Berry from the wing. Get your track shoes on. If you allow the Tar Heels to get in transition and push the break, primary break there, they will make you pay. But Gunmanson right back at him with a finish. 90 seconds remaining. Barry's been on fire. Sweet dish inside, and Brooks will shoot a pair. Joel Barry scored the last 12 points for Carolina. I'll tell you what, it's what you expect your most outstanding player from last year's Final Four to do. And he's a confident player who understands how to lead this team. The kick out three there, he drives, and you want to help the maturation of the front line of the Tar Heels. As a senior leader, you make life easy for them. You create opportunities for them. The nice drive and find, Brooks earns himself a trip to the line, knocks down the first, but... Make no mistake, Joel Berry is one of the best point guards in all of college basketball. We talked about the most outstanding player of the Final Four. Well, and his role's got to increase, if that's possible, this year with the losses of Justin Jackson and Kennedy Meeks, Tony Britt, Tony Bradley. An offensive foul back to Carolina. So Pritchett picks up his first. Critical for Bob McKillop's team to close his first half strong, trailing by four right now. Jalik Felton back in, five in blue. Taking the place of 7th Woods in the rotation tonight. Play Tech well off the mark. Williams gets it back and inside connects. Oh, that was silky smooth. It's all about being ready for your opportunity. We talked about Joel Berry's status having to improve. Maybe asked to score a little more. But Kenny Williams doing the job as well. Stepping up, doing all the little things. Six-point lead for Carolina. Uh, what a standout performance for Luke May once again. He's got another double-double, his fourth of the season. 13 points, 10 rebounds, Jason Cable. And he's doing it in an efficient manner, running the floor, doing his work early, carving out space, and when you back off of him beyond the three-point line, he can make you pay. But, Roy, we've seen him expand his game in this contest, putting the ball on the floor, attacking. And he's the one guy that Coach Williams can count on on this front line to rebound the basketball at a consistent clip. He must continue to do that throughout this contest. And the light has come on for him in such a major way. Wing triple, in and out. And the Tar Heels will take over. Seven-second differential between game and shot clock, North Carolina. Been dominant in the paint in this first half. 13 of their made field goals. They're made 17 field goals, rather, coming from inside. Five to shoot here. Felton. Too strong. May taps it up. Aldridge controls. Wildcats have to hurry. Here's Grady. Sizing up a triple. Launches. And that'll do it for a fast-moving first half. Forty-three, thirty-seven, our halftime score. Luke May a double, double with thirteen and ten. So we send you now to the studio. Matt Schick, Tom Crean, Dallin Cup, guys, take it away. It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. A beautiful night in the Queen City. Start of our second half between 13th ranked North Carolina and Davidson Tar Heels. Defending national champions leading by six. A raucous atmosphere inside the Spectrum Center. Jason Cable, Roy Philpott. We mentioned at the top, Davidson needs to connect from long range. They made seven triples in the first half. That's got to continue in the second. Well, the Wildcats must do the job continually to knock down three-point shots, spreading the floor. And they had success by spreading the wealth. There you see Peyton Aldridge from the corner. Pritchett, not known as a three-point shooter, but feet set. 
Gunmanson knocks it down as well. Multiple players have stretched the defense for the Wildcats, but the Tar Heels simply doing a nice job defensively, turning great defense into early offense. Luke May with the finish, Theo picks in two blocks. The Tar Heels dominating points in the paint when you look at 26 to eight. Talked about the Wildcats knocking down seven triples. But when you think of Carolina, a team that is known for dominating the backboard, plus 14 there in the first half getting the job done. And I think that's a big question for the Tar Heels as we move through this season. Aldridge right out of the gate. The corner triple is, you know, the rebounding. Can that continue to improve? And then which one of these freshman bigs has got a chance to emerge into those roles vacated by Kennedy Meeks, Isaiah Hicks? That standout team from last year that won the national title. Good start for Davidson to begin our final 20 minutes. Aldridge, first team all conference. Can't get the bounce. May already with a double-double, his 11th rebound. And Barry attacking. Foul to the paint. Goodmanson will pick up his second. You talk about rebounding for this Tar Heel team. What they're doing now is by committee. You see Theo Pinson, you see Williams coming downhill from the guard position, lending in hand, and that's what the Heels are going to have to do throughout this season until this big freshman front line starts to improve and mature. And already early here in the second half, the second turnover for the Tar Heels. Wildcats gain another possession, a chance to inch closer, down three. Well, Davidson starts this second half exactly how it wanted to. Trailing by three, Roy Williams. You know, he mentioned to us today, too, that Tar Heels went on an 11-day road trip, including the PK-80 event, which was fantastic. If you're watching tonight, you probably were watching a lot of those games out in Portland. But it's an 11-game road trip. They played Michigan State right before they came home. They were gone over Thanksgiving. It's a little bit of a, a different deal from what they normally do, and they kind of got tired against the Spartans in that loss. Aldridge back iron and tap back out to Pritchett. Open look from the corner. Mickelson comes up short again, and here comes Carolina. But that's one of the reasons they lost that game against the Spartans. Michigan State, by the way, is also really good. Well, you talk about the Tar Heels competing in the PK-80. They also played Stanford prior to going to Portland. It's a long time being on a West Coast swing. But what an event. So many great coaches, great players, and all in celebration of the great field night. The Tar Heels are playing a tough schedule as they do every year. Michigan State the only hiccup, but a great bounce back game at home against the Wolverines. And here against a hot shooting Davidson Ball Club here in Charlotte. I think it's one of the other storylines so far in the early part of the non-conference schedule for most teams. You saw that Big Ten conference game taking place tonight, but the ACC dominated the Big Ten in the ACC Big Ten Challenge, taking 11 out of 14 games. And you know when conference play starts in January, it's going to get tough. Inside, beautiful bounce pass to Kenny Williams. Theo Pinson, quite simply, is the best passer on this team. Great size, great ability to have his head up and wait for the perfect moment for a teammate to be open. Bob McKillop did not like that call, but check out the pass here from Pinson. He attacks middle. Pritchett does a nice job defensively, but you notice Pinson's head is always up. Eyes locked in on the other four jerseys in motion. And Williams doing the job cutting back door for a nice, easy two inside. Teddy Valentine came over and overruled Lee Castle to give it back to Davidson, and that was the right call. Five-point advantage for the Tar Heels. Pritchett attacking Benson. Ten to shoot. Open look, McGarity. It's been ten minutes since Luke May has scored a basket. You think about how far he's come. His career high was established last year against Davidson. He scored ten points. Now he's averaging over 20 and an offensive foul. The third turnover here in this second half. 
for North Carolina. And coaches speak at halftime. The first four minutes, we have a lead. Let's set the tone and execute on both sides of the ball in the first four minutes. Tar Heels have not done that. Foul trouble sends Brooks to the bench. And now the Tar Heels are going small. They're trying to match up with this essentially four or five guard lineup that the Wildcats have on the floor. Five point game. Down low goes to Aldridge. Quick spin and the basket. And Roy, what happens there? The Tar Heels go small. Aldridge has been living beyond the three point line immediately. He goes inside against Theo Pinson, carves out space and finishes. He's got 13, triple, and the response by Joe Barry. And when you need a big basket, number two in blue can give it to you. That's a great safety blanket to have. Another coach on the floor, 15 big points for the senior point guard. And I like the big points. He makes them when you got to have them. Goodmanson, the answer. And the hot shooting for Davidson behind the arc continues. A one-possession game. May, the pump fake, in the paint. Got too cute with that one. Carhill save it. Barry outside to Penson. That's not his shot. That is Williams's. And a nice save on the hustle by Robinson. Williams connects in traffic. Well, Williams gets the two. But the play for that game was Robinson. First, he dove on the floor to keep the ball alive. Then the offensive rebound. You want to earn playing time. You want to solidify your role in this rotation. You lay out for your team, gain extra possessions, and do the little things it takes to help your team be excellent on both sides. Aldridge with the left hand. Off the side of the rim. Robinson, meanwhile, a career high. Eight points all in the first half. All on consecutive possessions. May down low with a bounce. May's got 15. He's playing with so much confidence. So calm, allowing the game to come to him, not forcing anything. Just doing the job, carving out space. And the Tar Heel guards are looking for him early and often. Do your work early, two feet in the paint. Build the wall over the top, the nice touch. Heels ahead. Woo! Make sure you join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for cancer research. Jason Cable, Roy Philpott. If there is one person dead or alive that I wish I could interview right now, it would be the late Jimmy Valvano. I, the 30 for 30 special survive in advance. It, it brings me to tears every time I watch it. And all the energy and passion that he brought to the triangle up in Riley with the NC State program is just, it'll never be forgotten. Absolutely. A, a great coach, an even better human being who's done so much for student athletes. And will be remembered for the great fight. Goodmanson, another three for Davidson, and much needed at that. That was North Carolina's largest lead, Jason. And once again, out of a timeout, the Wildcats doing the job, executing, moving the basketball, finding an open shooter for three. May under control, but contested by Aldrich. Good defense for 23 and White. And when you're defending Luke May, the key inside is to not give up an angle. Move your feet, build your wall, make him score over you. That's where at times he can struggle. Goodmanson off the screen and off the glass. And the crowd erupts here in Charlotte. One possession game again. Some 14,000 strong here inside the Spectrum Center. Home of the NBA's Charlotte Hornets. And some Davidson fans making their presence being felt as May will shoot a pair foul deep inside what makes Davidson so difficult to defend they shoot the ball at a high percentage and all five guys are in constant motion cutting slicing through the lane with the ability to pass so difficult to defend a nice find and finish inside second foul on Aldridge there's a look at the great win his airness in attendance tonight Michael Jordan 
Well, he's got to be pleased with what happened last season, another national championship. And they're not rebuilding this year, Jason. They're going to have a chance to do some more things in the rough and rugged ACC this go around. You call him Michael Jordan, I call him the GOAT. The greatest of all time. Of all time. God is doing the job here now with the Charlotte Hornets. And you knew with the Tar Heels in town, he was going to be somewhere near with that baby blue on representing. Grady spun it off the wrong side of the glass. Gimmonson scored the last eight for Davidson. Vincent just two for 20 from distance this year. Joel Berry, much better and much more efficient. Berry with 18. And as Jason likes to say, 18 big ones. You're Theo Pinson. That's a part of understanding who you are as a player. He's not a three-point shooter. He's a slasher at times this season. I think he's taken ill-advised threes. And the Wildcats now, Aldridge has struggled a bit beyond the three-point arc. He's making his bones here in this second half, getting the ball in the paint. Nice spinning shot there over Luke May. He's got 15, averages 22. And here's Robinson. And May, a nice job not to get called for the foul, not to go over the back. It'll stay with Carolina. Checking in is Will McGarity, the Boston College transfer. Pritchett is out. Well, you got to stay right in Barry's grill. In the paint. And two free throws upcoming. Well, just right up the street here in the Queen City, we'll have the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship game. That's tomorrow night. Number one Clemson, seventh-ranked Miami, and a spot in the college football playoff at stake for Dabo Sweeney and the Tigers, Mark Rick and the Hurricanes. 8 Eastern over on ABC, live on the ESPN app. And what an atmosphere that's going to be, Jason. A sellout. Defending national champions in town in football and in basketball this weekend. When you look at the job Dabo Sweeney's done, you lose the best player in school history in Deshaun Watson. So many key players from that defense, full where the linebacker leading the charge, directing traffic. And you find yourself number one in the country, able to control your destiny against a Miami team that has their swagger back. That turnover chain has really injected life into that program. Aldridge rejected by May, but he got him on the wrist. And Peyton Aldridge already with 15 will shoot a pair. As May picks up the personal, that's his first. Oh, I love the football knowledge you just dropped on me right there. You gave me a Watson and a Bullwear reference. That's <laughs> impressive. Your versatility never ceases to amaze. I look like that as a player. I had to be. I wasn't the most athletic <laughs> guy. Had to be a guy that could do some two different things on the floor. Aldridge and Goodmanson have scored all of Davidson's second half points. 16 to be exact. So who do you like tomorrow night? The U and the turnover chain and the upstart Hurricanes? Or the defending champs? What are you thinking? It's hard to pick against Dabo Sweeney and the job Clemson does. They score. The defense remains stout. And Miami's lost some key players. You look at the tight end being hurt, the second best receiver on the squad. Right. But that defense and that chain, man, it, it just injects so much life. And I've seen countless, as I said, mock chains throughout Uptown Charlotte and a lot of Hurricane fans here to cheer their club on. Game is a sellout. 10 to shoot for North Carolina with a four-point lead. Robinson out of control. And controlled by Aldridge, here comes Davidson. Wildcats lead the country. 14 threes made per game coming into tonight. Already with 10 this evening. And another open look for Aldridge. Rebound by Manley. Barry a deep three, air ball, and saved brilliantly by Luke May. This guy does it all. And immediately Coach McKillop turns to the bench. McGarity, for guys jumping out of bounds, you must have your hands ready, move out of the way. You have to do something. But Luke May, Johnny on the spot, not giving up on that play. 
That extra effort is what this young man is all about. May. And Regal the rebound. Wildcats trying to make it a one possession game once again under 12 to play. Aldridge back to work, fade away. And tapped out the play tech. Quickly ahead to Robinson, fast break. May corrals and rejected from behind by Grady. And a timeout on the floor. Fifty-eight, fifty-four. Kellen Grady out of nowhere. The rejection. Davidson in it. Well, shocking development there, Matt. We appreciate it. Tech pick ninth in the rough and rugged ACC preseason poll. Carolina, the defending national champions, pick second. And Jason, you look at the top eight or nine. Those are tournament teams come March. Well, absolutely. And Georgia Tech still without Josh Okogie. A surprise freshman last season. Did an excellent job. Multiple 30-point games. Out of the timeout. Manley and a chance for three. Sterling Manley, the freshman from Greensboro. 57% shooter this year. That's one of the reasons why he's close to the rim. Kovacevic picks up his first. And once again, you talk about these young men, their development. The guards have to create opportunities for them. Jalik Felton has a great opportunity vying for that backup point guard spot with seven woods out. The draw, the dish, and Manley, he's had his spots. 16 points, 13 rebounds in the contest against Bucknell. Just continue to improve, do all the things defensively, know your assignments, and rebound the basketball. The offense will come. Aldrich contested, and a late whistle will send him back to the strike. Heels, meanwhile, have tied their largest lead of the evening at seven. Roy Williams thought that one was all ball. But you love the aggression of this young man. He knew where he was supposed to be defensively. He carved and came down to not allow Aldridge to have an angle. I thought it was a clean block, but more importantly, Roy, he knew where he was supposed to be, and he was there on time to fulfill his assignment. Aldridge now with 18. Manley, one of those elite freshmen, signed on late with Carolina. You see his numbers during his senior year. This is a guy that broke both of his legs in high school. Really came on late in the recruiting process, Jason, as a senior. A big gift for Roy Williams as Benson hit the deck hard. And a blocking foul called against the Wildcats. And that was Regal. And that'll be his second. The Wildcats unable to take advantage of Joel Berry on the bench. That's the time you have to try to make a push. When you're going against a freshman point guard and Jalik Felton, that's when you want to turn things up and try to push tempo and create that space to get back in the game. Give the Hills a lot of credit, and Jalik Felton sees an opportunity that he's had. Great ball game here in Charlotte tonight. Under 11 to play inside to Manley. And he'll shoot two. And John Axel Goodmanson picks up the personal foul. That's his third. Make that his fourth. And so fouls mounting up. And the sophomore from Iceland. Mainly 77% at the line this season. And Jason, my question for you is, does Davidson have enough firepower to stay in, in this one? Here in the second part of our second half. I think that's one of the questions we'll find out here shortly. Well, I, I think absolutely. The three-point okay. shot is the great equalizer. You must continue to get stops. Defensively is where they have to step up and be aware. So much attention in the ball screens is being paid to Joel Berry and the guards coming off that is freeing the bigs rolling to the basket, creating those opportunities. Wildcats get the job done defensively. Offensively, now they can get in a rhythm and create those open looks. Better and officiating crew going to have a second look at that last sequence to determine who the last foul was on. We'll check and see if Goodman, Goodmanson, in fact, was the 
guilty party. It appears as if he was. He's the last guy to make contact. Rusty Regal comes crashing down, but Gunmanson. So Regal instead now will get the foul. And Gunmanson has three instead of four. That'll be Regal's third. And that's a bonus for the Wildcats. Gunmanson's a guy, 15 points a game, six assists, six rebounds. He fills the stat sheet and can also stretch the defense. Not being saddled with those four with just under 11 to go is a bonus for the Davidson Wildcats. Heels in the bonus the rest of the way. And back to a seven point game for Roy Williams Club. Goodmanson against Barry. Whip it around to Aldrich. And the contact was heavy that time by Brandon Robinson. That'll be his third. Davidson played Carolina close back at the Dean Dome last season. It was a three-point game with under two minutes to play. Wildcats got off to a red-hot start similar to tonight here in Charlotte. Couldn't quite close the deal on the road. Davidson's last win in this series coming all the way back in 2001. And, Jason, I hate to bring that up for you. <laughs> Bob McKillop's teams are always well prepared. They execute on both sides of the ball. To speak of last year, the point guard position, Jack Gibbs, 2,000 points score. In and out for Goodmanson. Carolina controls. That's Manley with a rebound. I mean, it is difficult as a defensive player to try to keep up with all the screens, the backdoor action, and the three-point shooters. Well, live bodies, active movements, guys moving without the basketball. And when you add in the three-point shot, Kovacevic down low, nearly tied up. Can't find the basket. Good defense by Carolina. Sterling Manning doing the job, building his wall. The block shot, and you reward the young fella. If he's going to guard your yard, protect the paint, not allow easy opportunities at the rim, you reward him from that screen. Once again, Theo Pinson. The find and the finish for Manning inside. Largest lead of the night. Manley now with seven. Wildcats need a basket. Aldridge double team. Penson fighting for it. And here comes Theo Penson. Trying to go coast to coast with a bounce. And a chance for three. Boy, his vision under control most of the time, Jason. And Tell you what, all of his experience now as a senior, Theo Penson, getting the job done. Well, he's missed the versatility. He's shown everything, defensively blocking shots, coming downhill to get rebounds, and playing small. If he's the guy that can corral that rebound, the Hills, who are known to be a fast, up-paced team, become faster. He can rebound, push. He's a right-handed player that prefers to go left and finish with that left hand. Takes the harm, the kiss. Opportunity for a three-point play. Broke his foot his freshman year, missed 14 games, didn't play versus Davidson last season. And look at this lead. It swells to 12 on the strength of a 9-1 to run. And this is danger territory for the Davidson Wildcats. You must get a good shot this possession. You have to have an opportunity, a good opportunity at the rim. Alters has been double-teamed routinely in this second half in the paint. Goodmanson. In traffic amongst the trees. Can't connect. Tar Heels looking for a dagger. Benson just 2 of 20 from distance, but off the glass. And well done for the senior. And no one more happy than Coach Roy Williams. He spoke to Theo Pinson after the last contest, explained to him, turn down those three-point shots. Use your athleticism. And Theo Pinson... Mr. Versatility, show, go, up and under, the nice finger roll for the finish.
A stunning upset in the ACC. Don't forget Saturday, 3.30. That's tomorrow, 7th-ranked Kentucky hosting Harvard inside a rump. And then it's number two, Kansas and Syracuse in the third annual Hoop Hall Miami Invitational inside American Airlines Arena. Both games on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. Back here to live action in the Queen City. Wildcats, ice cold to start this second half. No field goals in the last five minutes. And that'll change as Kellen Grady connects with a corner triple. And Grady's a guy that needs to get going. Second leading scorer, a guy who has put up big numbers here in his early campaign. He's been lost in the shuffle with the Hills doing a nice job, but they're a three-ball corner pocket. Approaching eight minutes to play. Barry couldn't get off the ground. Grady restricted him as Kellen Grady will pick up the personal. Georgia Tech losing to Grambling. How about that as a shocker? Their home floor. The Jackets surprise team in the ACC last season. Josh Pastner, 20 wins, got all the way to the NIT championship game. But no surprises this year. Everyone is well aware. And once again, without Josh Akogi serving a suspension as well as a broken hand. He's a guy that pumped in about 16 points a game for the Jackets last year. We desperately need him back to put the ball in the, on, in the hole. Very perfect at the line tonight. Seven for seven. He's got 22. Already scoring at a career high clip. Over 15 per game coming in. That's going to go up after tonight. Heels trying to run away from Davidson here in the second half. Pritchett outside to Aldridge. And basket looking smaller here in our final 20 minutes for Davidson. Here's Williams attacking and rejected. Back to May. Wide open with the flush. Luke May with 18 and 15 rebounds. Who says Luke May is not a superior athlete? Offensive rebound goes up and finishes with authority. I mean, May's only a junior. He's not a threat to leave after this season, is he? You wouldn't think so, but the numbers he's putting up. This young man plus 15 points a game from a season ago. Inside, May again, right on cue. And a freshman mistake defensively. Kellen Grady, no ball pressure, hands down, allowing the passer great vision. And that's just simply Carolina break, option number one, the back screen leading to a lob. But the story has been Luke May getting the job done in many different areas, showing his athleticism, the block, the shot, 20.16 rebounds. <laughs> Throw it down, big fella. Tar Heels running away from Davidson as we give you an update on Jason Capel's checklist. Davidson's got to make more than 11 threes. That's just how it is. Well, they average just under 14 a game. In order to beat a team like the North Carolina Tar Heels, your advantage, stretch them out, but give Carolina credit. Defensively, they've been stout. They made the adjustments and dominated the backboard. We talked about North Carolina. Absolutely hammered on the glass against Michigan State. They bounced back against Michigan, plus six in that contest. And here, plus 28, Roy, with 16 offensive. And then the power forward matchup has been very good throughout this contest. But the first time that Luke May and Joel Berry have scored 20 points in the same game, and just two excellent players, upperclassmen leading the way for this Tar Heel ball club. Tell you what, they look pretty good when that happens, too. Here's a steal. Brooks comes out of there with it. 17 to 4 run for Carolina. Luke May, by the way, the 16 boards tying a career high. I mean, I, I, was, I was joking about it, having him come out early, but man, his production has just been insane. Oh, the behind the back pass. And a quick whistle. This place about to come unglued if Brooks was allowed to attack the rim. Dio Pinson, constant motion. 
a guy that does the job. Secondary break, nice deflection, but Luke May head up, and Pinson with the sauce. Goodmanson picks up his fourth. Excuse me there. When you look at Brooks, he was just chomping at the bit from that pass to go up and really bring the house down. But Pinson's a guy, he's going to flirt with triple doubles throughout this season. He's a guy that can get you the 10, 11 points a game. We've seen his rebounding prowess and a playmaker by nature. He does so many things, positive things, on both sides of the ball for North Carolina. May now with 17 boards. That's a new career high. Barry has 22. May with 20. Grady for three. And back to a 15-point game. That's a freshman in Kellen Grady. Out of Boston, Massachusetts. Under six to play here in Charlotte. Heels coming off an impressive win against Michigan in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. After a setback to Michigan State in Portland at PK-80 last week. Barry the jump stop in the paint. And how smooth was that? Twenty-four for Joel Barry. The lead is seventeen. Aldridge, first team All Atlantic Ten, too strong there. Now the question for you, my friend: Does North Carolina have a chance to repeat this year? Is there enough talent that can develop? Can the bigs come on quick enough to where they'll have a chance to get back to the Final Four again? Well, that's the one question. You must be lucky. You must stay healthy as we see Joel Berry grabbing his knee. But this is a very talented Carolina basketball team. What, what are the ingredients you need to have an opportunity to make a Final Four run? You need great guard play. You can check that off the list. One of the, again, one of the top point guards in the country. And take a look. Joel Berry, the jump stop goes up. And from that play... A strong move. He's going to take off down the tunnel to the locker room. And that's but, certainly a concerning sight, but we'll see what happens there. But it's a long athletic team. They have experienced guys that have been to back-to-back -to -back Final Fours and National Championship games. The key is going to be the development of the front line. Right. If those bigs, the three guys, can develop, gain experience, and improve as this year goes on, Absolutely. This is the Carolina team that's going to compete for an ACC title. An opportunity to possibly make a run to San Antonio in the Final Four. Regal from the corner. Team captain and a senior from right here in Charlotte. But really, that's Brandon Huffman, Sterling Manning, and Garrison Brooks. The bigs for North Carolina as Regal fouls out. And don't forget, join his sports center. With Scott Van Pelt after the Pac-12 championship game over on ESPN. Scott will give you his take on all the dysfunction in Tennessee, plus Jimbo's new job in College Station. The Yankees have a new manager. Give you an update on that. Tim Kirchin will have the latest. And plus, Tiger is back in action, and he held a second-round lead earlier today in the Bahamas, and he looks really good. Scott Van Pelt will have more on all of those stories coming up after the Pac-12 championship game over on ESPN. Well, Joel Berry returning from the locker room after a brief hiatus. That's a good sign. We're told Joel Berry simply bumped knees. And there's a guy that, that has happened to before. That is very painful when it occurs. Back on the bench now. And a guy we haven't talked about because he's injured for the Tar Heels right now. Cameron Johnson, he's another weapon, an excellent three-point shooter, a graduate transfer from Pittsburgh, 3.9 GPA. He brings another dimension, another long wing that can stretch the four as well, knocking down three-point shots. Now, he looked great in preseason, tore his meniscus. They hope to get him back in time for ACC play. Supposed to miss four to six weeks. And here comes Davidson. That was a big-time get, though. You see some of his numbers. Only 12 points per game last year for the Panthers. The Tar Heels very familiar with his play. You think six main three-pointers, 24 points last season against the Tar Heels. 
going to be a pretty good ball club when you add this young man. The Tar Heels 14 point lead with just under four minutes to go here. No, Matt, thank you very much. Zags will be back in action coming up on Tuesday. The Jimmy V Classic facing off against Villanova, 7 o'clock Eastern, followed by Syracuse and UConn. Matchup of old school Big East rivals, 9 o'clock Eastern. That's coming up Tuesday over on ESPN, all a part of the Jimmy V Classic. And, of course, on the ESPN app. You got the app, right? You downloaded the app a long time ago. Absolutely. You got to have it. Got to have it in airports waiting to connect for your next game. You got to keep up with the action going on in all sports. Big weekend here in Charlotte. ACC championship game tomorrow night over at Bank of America Stadium. Number one ranked Clemson, seventh ranked Miami. That game will be on ABC starting at around 8 o'clock tomorrow. Great energy in this arena tonight, not only for that matchup and the anticipation as Grady hits another three, but for this game as well. And Davidson trailing by just 11 now after that triple, and Grady has 18. Trying to keep this close a little longer. Jason Capel, Roy Philpott. Karam's out of bounds. It'll stay with Carolina. Coach McKillop been talking about Grady. The Davidson staff heard that he was a Steph Curry fan. War number 30, loves Steph Curry. So that was his end right there. He said, maybe we can get this kid. Started recruiting him really hard and... He's here putting up numbers, and Luke May, once again, out-of-bounds plays. Fakes coming off the diagonal screen, simply dives to the basket. A nice find and an easy two. Backdoor cut and an offensive foul. Theo Pinson claps in approval. And Pritchett picks up the personal. That's his second. Meanwhile, Luke May, 22 and 17 tonight. A new career high with those 17 boards. And he continues to work hard. That's his mantra. Roy Williams loved it from the second he started recruiting him. Told the family, hey, be patient here. Be patient. He's going to develop. He's going to be good enough. It's going to take a little bit of time. And lo and behold, that proved to be accurate. And then some, as Barry nearly coughs it up. Only the time when players are so quick to want to come to college and get out as quickly as possible. It's refreshing to see a young man come in, wait his turn, work hard to improve. And when opportunity arose, he's been ready. Make no mistake, the Tar Heels needed this from Luke May this season. They needed him to do the job, manning that front line. I don't think we could have expected this sort of output. You can expect that from Joel Berry the second. And he continues to pour it in. He's got 27. And that's a nice one-two punch. Inside-outside threats with athletes manning defensively the wings. A couple of haymakers by Carolina. Goodmanson will shoot two. And you mentioned, too, with Cam Johnson, when he is on the floor, it's another weapon. As conference play gets underway in about a month, that really could be a game changer for a team that's going to be ranked likely inside the top 15. And you mentioned, too, the championship experience. There's Cam Johnson, the graduate transfer from Pittsburgh. Well, we've seen throughout this first half, the Tar Heels have gone small. And I think until the bigs develop, get confidence, gain experience, and the coaching staff gains that in them, I think we're going to see this team go small more often. And Cam Johnson just brings another dimension to that. Another guy who's 6'8", can defend multiple positions. And then offensively, you look on the floor right now for North Carolina, you have five guys that can pass, handle. Theo Pinson's not a three-point shooter, but he can make the right play to get open shots for others. A team that's going to be very difficult to guard, but can they rebound against the best teams in the country will be the question. Trapping full-court pressure, no problem. Luke May with 24. Talk about stuff in the stat sheet. Back to a 16-point game under two to go. Gonzaga and Creighton coming up, and we're done here. You know, this is what's right with college basketball. In a game like this, you got two teams from the same state. One is ranked. One is you know, very well coached with Bob McKillop leading the charge for Davidson. Next season will be his 30th campaign, which is hard to believe. But you look at the atmosphere tonight, you listen to it, you feel the energy here in the Queen City. It's the kind of game that should be played just about every year, right here, by the way. Absolutely. You talk about North Carolina, a hoop state. 
the love of basketball. This is the Davidson team that's going to compete in the Atlantic 10. Just had an off shooting night in the second half, and the Tar Heels on their game. We talked about in the prior the opening which real Tar Heel team who we could rely on the team against Michigan State or the team that bounced back against Michigan. This is a very good North Carolina team with leadership, with experience, and they're playing with supreme confidence now early in the season. Davidson last one of this series way back in 2001. Open look for Barry. Well short as I get a little nudge from my partner here in the booth. You said it once already. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we do what we can here. We got to keep you in check as best as we can with all your talent. And I appreciate it. <laughs> stay hungry, stay humble, they like to say. Grady, as a freshman, has had a whale of a performance so far. 18 points tonight, missed that triple there. Under a minute to go. And the Tar Heels are going to win their seventh game in eight opportunities as Roy Williams will clear the bench. Aaron Roman, a walk on, will check in, as will Walker Miller. Shea Rush, whose brother Brandon played at Kansas and won a national championship. Number 11 in blue checks in as well. If these are the guys that work hard and practice every day, prepare the rotation players when the lights are on and the popcorn's popping to come out and produce. You love when they have an opportunity to come out, execute, and a chance in this environment to put points on the board. You wanted to know with six on the shot clock how Jalik Felton would perform tonight with seventh Woods out. Have you seen much from Jalik that, that impresses you? Well, I thought during the stretch there in the first and second half when Joel Berry went out of the game, the Tar Heels didn't lose much on the floor. Nothing spectacular. He ran the team. He understood his assignments defensively. Right. And as a point guard early in your career, that's all you can ask for backing up Joel Berry. Aldridge with 22. Here's a steal by Collins. And tapped out to Felton. Shot clock is off. That'll just about do it. Big screen by Roman. No whistle and Goodmanson right before the horn for the final points of the night. Well, the box score tomorrow morning, it'll look like a close game. And for the better part of 25 minutes, it was. But North Carolina, Jason, victorious, 85-75. Your upperclassmen lead the way. Luke May, Joel Berry getting the job done inside and out. That's the recipe for success. Tar Heels did an excellent job controlling the game in both halves defensively and flawless on the offensive end of the floor. Fourth double-double for Luke May. He finishes with 24 and 17 plus 27 for Joel Berry. 85-75, the final. Creighton and Gonzaga coming up next. Good night from Charlotte as we send you back to the studio.